I know that uh, energy prices are going to be going through the roof. I understand that, you know, peak hours, higher consumption, they'd have to build new generating stations. If you're using power, you know, at night, as opposed to the, the heavy times during the day, um, you know, maybe that's going to help out a little bit. We have to do something, so I guess smart meters is one kind of answer to, uh, to help people to use their energy more wisely. If it was up to me, I wouldn't have a meter at all. <laughs> Everything can't go on the way it is. There are limited resources, not just in this province, but across the world. We must become a much more conservation-oriented society. So smart meters and smart meter technology is hand in glove with our future. We haven't built a lot of new power plants in a while, and we're in a, we're in a period of growth. We need to be able to sustain that growth. If you look at the size of our geography, we're roughly twice the size of Texas. So deploying smart metering for us was a significant challenge, but also we looked at it as an opportunity. In general, the biggest motivation for customers to respond is an economic incentive. They're running their furnace, running their electricity, and it's costing them money. So that's when most people have incentive to cut back. Other people will do it because they are altruistic. They are more green, they are environmentally conscious. Conservation is important. I mean, we are boring the planet from the next generation, are we not? In order to reach the large number of customers, the millions that we have in the United States and Canada, we need a price signal. People definitely want things like smart meters. I mean, I think anything that you, you gives you a little bit more control over uh, how you use your electricity or certainly your bill. And this is not just a theory, it's being tested. If I can conserve a few pennies and put it to where I want, I'm for that too. There are 14 pricing experiments and those have shown conclusively that customers do drop their usage when the price rises. We started this project back in 2005 before people were even talking about smart grid. We've assembled a dream team that has gone out and delivered what was an idea on paper. We're thinking we have business needs. We got to put out a network. How can we leverage that network for other opportunities inside the business and for our customers? It was just a natural extension for us to take this last mile piece of communication that we needed for smart metering and say, let's really leverage this up. We can't just think in terms of voice we need to be thinking in terms of voice and data, mobile data as well as fixed data, and the convergence of all of these. We approach this quite simply, develop a business case, do a proof of concept, pilot the technology, and then start implementing the program. This project's in flight. It's in the air, it is moving, and it is delivering what it is supposed to. It operates extremely reliably, it works in scale. We have 1.3 million meters that we are going to install by 2010. We have 400,000 meter points installed already for Hydro One. Back-end system integration work. Wi-Fi capabilities. New servers, new platforms, new hardware. Broadband connectivity between the workers, the trucks, as well as the infrastructure in the area. And to do that, you need industry interconnectable plug-and-play intelligent standards. It's, there's no two ways about it. This is not only about the smart grid. It's about linking the smart grid to the smart home. Maybe along with the smart meter, it could be sort of like a, a thing on your TV set, and then when your beer fridge kicks in in the basement. It could be a little bell or a reminder and saying, hey, You've had your air conditioner on for this long today. Open some windows. This is about making it easy for the consumer to do the right thing. They will have the ability to know at a particular time of day how much power is being used by these various devices. We've been trying to layer additional applications on the technology, so as we deploy it, we don't deploy it just for smart meters. We deploy it for in-home devices. We deploy it for sensors on our distribution system you know, real-time outage management. As far as the grid goes that people get excited about is the, um, the fact that power can go both ways. 
it gives you the ability to add something back in. And if you're doing that in an environmental way, I mean, that's amazing. The coolest thing about this Hydro One project is that it's happening. Hydro One is really doing it. We are proceeding cautiously with proven technology to make sure that we are leaving open enough doors to bring forward the next innovation. You'll have electric cars, you'll have mobile assets and distributed resources. Direct load control, plug and play networks on a global scale. Intelligent electronic devices for your substations. All of which will have some kind of brokered command and control relationship with the grid because the grid is a living element that transmits power and reliability amongst the participants. So something that wasn't doable before from a business case perspective is now all of a sudden doable. Choosing no is not an option. We have to do something about our energy consumption. And I do believe that uh, the time is now. If we don't act today to build a smart grid, we will be having exactly the same problems 10, 20 years from now, which is the power will go out. We won't know why it went out. We will have a situation where customers won't know how to cut back on usage. We'll be forced to build those power plants that are polluting and expensive, and those are the real benefits of doing the smart grid. It is a reality. It is something that is going to happen. It's the first of its kind in North America. And it is going to transform our customer relationship. And we think that that's a very exciting way to enter the next decade. Yeah.